Thanks for joining another one of our video casts, Unlocking Cellular Health. Unlocking health to your cells. This is uh, so critical because it has incredible numbers of tentacles that expand out from there. So we struggled with what, how do we term this? Well, so we'll just say what it is. No, it's not like we're doing a, a discussion on post-concussive syndrome or migraines <clears throat> or irritable bowel, inflammatory bowel, or you know, infertility. So what are the factors within? No, this one is really brutally difficult because it has to do with something called methylation pathways. So when we say it is unlocking health, it's not an exaggeration, quite frankly, when you consider the number, and I just made a partial listing, by the way. I'd run out of room. I need another, another board. But, okay, unlocking cellular health via improving methylation pathways. <clears throat> Why, what does this do? Well, methylation has to do with what we call in chemistry CH3 groups. See, we need to be able to methylate well. If we methylate well, we help lower homocysteine, which is problematic in our bodies. We help to raise glutathione, which is a cellular detoxifying agent, which is critical to antioxidant status and protection of the cells. If I don't methylate well, or if I have sub- methylation pathways, I can open the door depending upon if I'm homozygote, heterozygote, C, ver there's, this, this is a genetic issue is what it is. This is a um, epi, if you will, type of genetic, it's a genetic characteristic, it's a generic trait, meaning that I may not methylate well. If I do not methylate well, utilizing these, quote, CH3 groups, or I have a genetic inborn error of metabolism here, this trait, this characteristic, if I have that, unless you define it via lab work and blood work, which you can do, there are COMT pathways. So you might be thinking, this is way over my head. I don't care about this stuff. <clears throat> well, you should, because if there's some depression in your family line, chronic anxiety or generalized anxiety disorders, multifactorial, but could very much be related back to poor methylation pathways. If we could define that and we could help you to methylate better, we could probably help you to some degree. If there are some focus and attentive issues in your children or maybe yourself, it could be linked Multiple issues here, zinc deficits, essential fatty acid deficits, chemicals in the environment, and then boom, we come back to methylation pathways. Hence, we can unlock health in you if we do it at a cellular level by dealing with this whole methylation impairment. Autism and autism spectrum disorders linked to, characteristically, not 100% of the time, but folks, children that have some possibilities for methylation pathways. Coronary artery disease, stroke, arteriosclerosis, MI, sudden heart attack, linked to poor methylation pathways, higher homocysteine, especially in the presence of elevated cholesterol. So I'm at a higher risk to developing arteriosclerosis, absolutely linked to a higher risk of stroke, let alone having a heart attack. Say, well, this sounds like, this is awesome. Just give me the pill. Well, the, the, the pill, and, I, and I'll get to that in a moment, because what we're going to do, this is an overview, touching on some of these areas. <clears throat> and then we're going to come back, and we're going to do a little bit of a series on more focused on neurologic, like schizophrenia, depression and anxiety, you know, neurologic issues. Then we might do one more on circulatory issues, focusing on coronary artery disease, arterial, arteriosclerosis, heart attacks, and do more circulatory, cardiovascular, right, along with stroke. Then we might get one just the functional. We're going to do one on functional issues. Migraine with aura and headaches. Is it linked to 
poor methylation pathways. Yeah, so I've done a ton of, ton of research on this one. This one I had to work at because this one's difficult. <clears throat> Originally, probably 12, 14 years ago, we started talking about this. About 15 years ago, at that time, Len and I did a show on um, Alzheimer's disease, neurodegenerative disorders, and elevated homocysteine. So elevated homocysteine is directly linked to this concept. So if you have high homocysteine, and we were somewhat laughed and scoffed at, because like no one had even heard of this. No one even knew what this really was. Well, it's, a, it's a byproduct of metabolism within your cells, hence cellular health. If I do not break this down, for lack of a better term, and convert it and release methionine out of this combination, SAMe, to help me detoxify and so on. As homocysteine builds, homocysteine can encourage stroke risk. It can encourage coronary artery disease. It can encourage certain areas right within here, depressive states and so on. So I lower homocysteine via improving methylation at a cellular level, hence unlocking health, keys to health. Sounds simple. It's pretty complex. It's incredibly complex. I believe that each year goes by, there are more and more links and studies and abstracts saying, yes, oh, fibromyalgia. There are links to poor methylation pathways in chronic fibromyalgia situations. Multiple chemical sensitivities showing now some direct links to poor methylation, poor detoxification. You say all up here. What is all? Well, if I, I needed to put a period in there, acute lymphocytic leuke leukemia, there are direct links now, not in all cases of ALL, but poor methylation pathways in acute lymphocytic leukemia. And what about Epilepsy. This one seems to be something that's usually on the rise. More and more abstracts popping up that chronic states of seizures, especially in youth and adolescence, poor methylation pathways. Then we throw in, excuse me, medications that deplete nutrients that help you to methylate. You increase the risk. For epilepsy. We know years ago folic acid was tied directly to spina bifida. Now we're seeing that poor, which folic acid is part of this, even cleft palate. So what we're going to do just for one, for about two, three minutes here, just give you some nutrients that are involved in helping you, not, not all encompassing. Riboflavin, B2, B6 ironically, especially B12 methylated forms of, I want to write this all out, methylated, methyl tetrahydrofolate, methylated forms of folic acid, methionine, trimethylglycine, I mean B12, B6, B2, folic acid, methionine, TMG, trimethylglycine, straight, I mean there are others, but this is just a quick list. You say, well just, well, just give me that. Well, you have to make sure in some cases that they are in the pyridoxal 5-phosphate form. Straight folic acid is not enough in a population that has this genetic tendency for MTHFR. This becomes woefully inadequate. You've got to go to the methylated, the, the, methylate, the cellular ready one of folic acid. Trimethylglycine donates a trimethyl, you see the word? This is not that complicated. Trimethylglycine methyl donating groups. Okay? So unlocking, so what you're saying is, Joe, if I just do take this stuff, I unlock cellular health. Well, you do can do some testing. COMT, MTHFR levels or this genetic tendency, and then you define. And then you look at family histories. What's the family history of depression, mood disorders, anxiety, and so on? 
And even in cases that you only show minor tendencies, homozygote, you show minor tendencies for these MTHFR issues. Um, we find in helping folks in an integrative uh, way with anything from mood disorders on that you can help their general health and maybe their response to their disease state, their situation, by helping them to methylate. This list goes on. Cancers related. Significant other. I mean, I, I wrote a list. I mean, it was addictions are linked. We talked uh, pulmonary embolisms are linked. We talked about the stroke risk, vascular dementia, bipolar disorder showing some links, uh, infertility, migraines with R. We kind of talked about here a little bit. Um, essential hypertension, essential hypertension, meaning no known origin for the high blood pressure. A lot of folks have a specific rationale. They're diabetics, <clears throat> renal, renal artery stenosis, blockage or um, closure of that renal artery, arteriosclerosis, whatever. Unlocking cellular health. We're going to follow this up with a few other teachings. We're going to try to group them. It'll be hard to do. I'm not going to do one in each and single every area. But if you battle some of these areas, ALL, learning disabilities, you know, you've had <clears throat> some chronic coronary artery disease, it may be linked, a number of things, but it may be linked to poor methylation. Continue to listen in, view our video cast, unlocking cellular health, how? Via enhancing methylation. God bless you. Thanks for being with us, and I'll see you on the next video cast. Take care.